see Krista here today. Well, it's good to see everybody here today. Yeah. I got about nine pages of notes, but I'm not going to preach them. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love that. You've been blessed for the day. Right. We're going to be in Mark chapter 1, verse, verses 40 through 45 to start with. Chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. When everybody gets your place, we'll have prayer. And then we'll... Father, thank you today for your goodness to us, for your mercy and all that you do for us and helping us along and giving us uh, health and uh, giving us wisdom and uh, making us able to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. I, I, I praise the Lord for those days when you get an opportunity to talk to somebody about Jesus. Father, I ask you to touch us today and lift us up and give us understanding. Um, give me clear clarity in preaching um, and then give us receptance to it and that we might use it in our daily lives. Father, we just praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. When, God's do when God does something for us, sometimes we're like the leper in uh, this scripture we're getting about about to read and um, let's read that scripture of uh, chapter uh, 1 starting in verse 40 and it says there came a leper to him beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him if you will you can make me clean and Jesus moved with compassion uh, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be you clean. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the, the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. And he, and he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away. <clears throat> and he said unto him, See that you say not, uh, nothing to any man, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony, testimony <coughs> unto them. All right, what, what he's uh, saying here is a man has come to him, and he's asked Jesus to cleanse him of leprosy, which was a, a pretty heinous disease. And there, it may still be around someplace. I don't know, maybe in uh, some other lands. I don't hear of it here, but could be. And after Jesus had cleansed him, he gave him an order. He said, see that you say nothing to any man about what? Well, about his healing, how he was healed. And, um, and show yourself to the priest and offer those things for your cleansing uh, that were commanded through Moses for a testimony unto them. Um, some of the, those things are ceremonial. Some are 
for cleansing and some are a trespass offering that he that he would have made um, possibly many other ordinances and health laws they had a lot of laws they had a lot of health laws 700 just basic laws and and then health laws mixed in there too i think or 600 mixed in there but the real point of this is this. The man went out and he started preaching it. Verse 45. But he went out and he began to publish it and to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city. Now, they're in a pretty good sized city. But uh, God, uh, Jesus didn't want him to go and start uh, talking about what God had done for him. Um, and, and he had reasons behind it. Um, but one of those things that happened was that he could no longer in, enter into the city, but was without in a, a desert place. And they came to him from every quarter. People don't understand how popular Jesus was. He was incredibly popular. Well, let me put it this way. People really wanted to see him, desired to see him and hear him. All that wanted that did not believe upon him and never did. But they all uh, wanted to take advantage of hearing of him. And... Uh, and so it was. And the real point is, is that the man went out um, immediately and started telling what Jesus had done to him. He, the very thing that Jesus said, don't do this, the guy goes right out and does it. And Jesus has just healed him. And you would think the person would be a person in those conditions or under that condition would have been uh, uh, obedient to the to Christ by not going out and doing the very thing he asked him not to do uh, but not so it was not the truth he uh, I, I can just imagine here's a man who has leprosy who has to cry out leper every time he's in the city he, he, all the way wherever he walked Wherever he went, he had to cry out leper and bring attention to the fact that he had leprosy, which was a flesh-eating uh, disease. And so I guess that he was so excited because Jesus uh, healed him that he felt like he needed to go out and to tell other people about it and praise God for it. Telling other people about it. So much so that Jesus was uh, overwhelmed by people. Overwhelmed and couldn't even enter into the city. And, uh, and people from all around came to see him and hear him. And they jammed up the city, the gates and, and everything. They, they couldn't get in. And people came to him to, from everywhere to be healed. And, it all, and he also preached the word. Now, healing is a great thing. Not to be healed of something. It is. And uh, there's much uh, emotion sometimes in that. But it's a great thing. But it is not more important than the Word of God. Okay? I want you to understand. That he went out and told people what God had done for him. But Jesus continued to preach the gospel. 
Jesus never mentioned it. Because the important thing to him was the gospel of Christ. Now, is this not true in our day? Do we not see this kind of uh, thing happening in our time? Uh, we're excited about the Word of God. We're excited about what God does. And we're excited about what He's going to do in the future because He's going to have to do a bunch. And uh, we're pretty excited about it. And, and, uh, and I talk about it a lot. I know I do. But the real point is not that. The point is, is that Jesus saves. There isn't a person alive who wants to be saved that Jesus will not save. Now, there are people who turn their back on him and put him off and, and Jesus continues to work with them and try to lead them to himself. But there comes a time when he quits. The Bible says, uh, that God shall not always strive with men. He shall not always deal with mankind's heart to try to lead people to Jesus. There's, there's a day coming, even before Judgment Day, that some people will be turned over to a reprobate mind, it says in Romans. And uh, they will be uh, given over and uh, forgotten about in that sense, in the sense of salvation. And so the very most important thing in life is that Jesus saves. When someone is healed, uh, we, we have to tell somebody how that God healed that one. Now, this is not bad because that's a real testimony, isn't it? When God heals somebody, it's a real testimony. But sometimes we get caught up in the testimony of things and we forget about what's really important. Now, listen, if you are sick and, and you need healing, well, that's pretty important to you. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we can't put away, cannot put away, the things of God and talk about the things of God and His healing of people as opposed to how He leads him, people to Himself in salvation. But do we tell them how God heals the soul? Um, and what He does to heal the soul? I know when I was not a believer, I, I, I didn't give a flying flip about anything other than me. Yeah. Kind, of, kind of terrible. But I know that my soul was uh, struggling. And, um, and I can tell you that it was what a blessing it was to get saved. What a blessing it was to know that I had uh, the peace of God in me. I didn't know what to do with it at that moment. But all I could talk about to people was that what I was, what I had been, and what Jesus did for me. Now, did He heal me? Yes, He did. He healed my soul. My soul was wretched and lost and dying and on my way to hell and he saved me. This was most important to me and, um, and it became very important to me for other people to know that Jesus saved. I remember the sign on top of the uh, making rescue mission for many years. Big letters on top. It said, Jesus saves. And boy, I used to love to see that sign. 
And one day I drove through there and they had taken saves off. And they put Jesus lives. Well, Jesus lives. And that's about Jesus. Jesus saves and that's about people. You understand. The fact that Jesus lives is a given because he's eternal. And when you see Jesus lives, you just kind of agree with it and go on. But when you see the sign that says Jesus saves, it makes you say, makes you think about your own salvation. About what God's done for you in that. And the things you want him to do for other people. Uh, in our lives that we know and love. And so anyway, uh, but we do, uh, but do we tell them how God heals the soul and uh, through salvation? And when Jesus saw the man in Capernaum, there was a man in Capernaum. Uh, look with me in chapter, Mark chapter 2, verse uh Let's see where that is. Yeah, starting in verse 4 uh, of chapter 2 in Mark. It says, And when they could not come near unto him for the press, for the, uh, the, the, the multitude, uh, these people were trying to bring their friend to Jesus to be healed. And they brought him and they couldn't get in. So they looked around and one of them had this bright idea. We'll just uncover the roof. This, this building's not going to stop us from getting in. It wasn't going to stop them from seeing that their friend received what he needed from Jesus too. You know, that's a point to us, isn't it? Really? We should never be satisfied with uh, uh, with going part way, uh, just doing half a job. Um, we got a whole world that does half a job right now, if they do that much. And we need to be as Christian people that do the whole job. So they said, "Well, we want our friend healed." And we can't get in. And there's only one way I see to get in. And that's to take the roof off the place. Well. And so they did. And when they had broken it up. And it didn't just come off. They had to uh, bash it in I guess. Or tear it up. They let the bed down. Uh, wherein the sick of the palsy lay. He had tremors. And he uh, lay in this bed and they lifted him up and put him on the roof and then lowered him down. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Well, wait a minute. I thought they were bringing him there to be healed. Well, they were. But they didn't realize the healing that he needed. He needed to be physically healed. He did. The leper needed to be physically healed. But there was a real need for, for healing in the soul, wasn't there? So, what good would it be you know, although we would all agree that it would be a nice thing to happen if if people were healed physically and particularly people we knew and we love but what good would that be if they were left unsaved unhealed well you know we look at people and we see things that go on and and when he saw this Man, he said, uh, he saw their faith. Now, look at verse 5. It says, when Jesus saw their faith. 
Well, their faith that he would heal was faith in Jesus. So you could conceive it that way. But he also saw a faith that was so strong that they took the roof off the house and got up there and lowered lower the man down in there. So you have to understand that Jesus was reading what they were thinking. He, he, he knew that they had faith in him. And that's why he said, Son, thy sins, sins be forgiven thee. Because he saw their faith. Jesus, before he healed, said, said to the man, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee, or forgiven you. And we have a tendency to get our work out of order. Sometimes we do things in a in a manner that's not the way that God would go about it. Now, I, I have spent a lot of time, and I'm not, I'm not boasting, I'm just saying this as a fact. I've spent a lot of time reading the Bible, studying the Bible, hours upon hours of it. And um, sometimes I can't express it the way I want to. But you know, I'm like you, maybe some of you, uh, I, I know more about it than I know what to do with sometimes. But the thing that has always impressed me was that if I start to get my, the work that God gives me out of order, then it isn't as effective as it would have been had I kept it in order. So, uh, when people ask me to uh, pray for them, um, I immediately my mind goes to the scriptures. And I start praising God for whatever he's going to do. I may not express it, but I start to do that. And, um, and, and, and that keeps it in the right order because uh, the first thing is salvation. Uh, now, we were in, let's see, where were we? 2, 9 through 12. All right, now, uh, back to this man, in verse 11. It said, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go to your own home. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth uh, before them all. Insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We've never seen anything like that. Well, you know, at a church we were in, a lady was blind. And they had a service laying on of hands and anointing with oil and praying over this lady. And she was healed of blindness. She could see. And it was a glorious thing. And everybody was just praising God about that. Now they never, I know who it was, but they never made her name known, although everybody knew. They didn't talk about that. They just talked about mostly about what God would do to a righteous woman who was living for Jesus. They got their priorities right. They got their work in the right order because the first thing to think about was the fact that she was saved. Now, God may have healed her anyway with people praying and laying hands on her and doing the thing in James that God calls on us, us to do uh, in a healing service. He may have healed her anyway, but he may not have either. God can do whatever he wants to do. And sometimes what he does depends on how we do the things he wants us to do and how we uh, 
go about that part in life. First is the need for spiritual healing, and then for feel, uh, physical healing, if a person uh, doesn't know Jesus Christ. I know my brother, and I've told that story, but uh, first thing that was in my mind when I went to Florida and got him, and we brought him back, uh, when I went down to the hospital, the first thing that came out of my mind, out of my mouth, was, uh, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And maybe not in exact words, but the same, but it is that. And he looked at me like, well, I'm having real physical problems here. Do you not care about that? Yeah. I cared about that. I did what I needed to do. I did what God gave me to do. But the order of it was, do you know Jesus? See, I, I wanted to know that if something happened to him, before I could get him back to, uh, well, we put him in Dublin, didn't we? We brought him home. Oh, that's right. Put him at the house, yeah. Um, I wanted to make sure that if he died on the way back or something happened to him in the, in the between, that he knew Jesus Christ. I didn't know God would heal him or not. I believed that he would if it was his will to do. But there have been many people I've prayed for that I had in my mind that they were already healed. A lot of people, they were already healed. Some were healed and some were not. So I didn't know what God was going to do that way, in that way, but I praised God for what He would do. And He asked me later on, He asked me, uh, do I count? I think is what He said. And I said, yes, you do count. Your soul counts. Your life counts. He was talking about his healing. And he expected that he would be healed. He figured if I prayed for him, God would heal him. Well, God doesn't do everything I ask him to do. I don't know about you. But I've asked things of God many times and it was not His doing to do it. And it wasn't His timing to do it either. So, in uh, chapter 2 there in verse 17, <clears throat> here's what Jesus said when they were, uh, when they were talking about uh, the man get, getting his bed up and going out and going home, he was healed and so forth. And in verse 17, when Jesus uh, heard it, he said unto them, they were talking about other people that needed to be saved and the publicans and the scribes, they were criticizing Jesus and uh, how that he ate with the uh, publicans and, and uh, sinners and different things. And he said, when Jesus heard it, he said, they that are whole have no need of a physician. So uh, he was not uh, given health necessarily or doing some work in the body of a person who was full of sin necessarily. But they that are sick, in other words, I heal or I take care of the people that need me in the way that I know that they need me. I mean, uh, if, if I die today, I will guarantee you I will be better than I was this morning. I'll be free 
from this body and I be in the presence of God. And do I want to die? No. I want to live and do something for the Lord. Well, I better celebrate a birthday. <laughs> That'd be good. But if I did, I would be better off. I came not to call the righteous, he said, but sinners to repentance. He said, um, you know, uh, I come to people in the way they need me and to do the things that God the Father wants me to do for that person. You know in Romans that the Spirit of God is making intercession on our behalf for things we don't even know we need yet. He's already making intercession for our lives for tomorrow and, and uh, the, the whole week that we're in. That God would uh, minister to us in a certain way because He knew us and the Spirit lives in us and knows what we desire and, and what we want. And if it's His will, He makes an intercession. Look with me at 1 Timothy chapter 1 real quick, would you? This is a faithful saying, verse 15, in 1 Timothy 1, and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Now, do you understand the priority of Jesus Christ? The priority of Jesus is to save sinners. No salvation, no heaven. You know, I'm sure that there are going to be people... Well, we, everybody here probably knows people that you didn't know whether they were saved or not, but they sure acted like it. But we're going to be shocked at some people who are in hell today that we all thought were, were believers because they acted that way or tried to uh, give themselves over to be that way and, and they were not. But Jesus came and he knows who are sinners and he tries to do that. His work priority is in order. Salvation. Uh, his work in us. His use of us for his own glory. The healing of us that brings glory to him. You know, listen, if you know Jesus... Um, and you get sick, well, I want to see you healed. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't give up one minute of seeing you saved to see you healed. Sometimes Jesus used healing first because it was a, me a method he used. Uh, in order to draw people to his godly power. We know that. Everybody knows that. It is true people uh, who have, uh, or who witnessed healing uh, do um, now they, let's say are. They are mesmerized intrigued, overwhelmed by the things that God can do. Now, when I pray for somebody to be healed, well, I expect God to, to hear me. But listen, I'm not God. And I don't have everything in the priority that God does. And I, 
I don't know what God's doing, but I believe that God will heal him. If I, if I ask him to do it, I believe he'll do it. If that can be his will to do it. Not because I'm anything, but because a believer asked. Somebody prayed for him and asked. You know, for John, I go this way too. If you're saved, you're healed. You might not be healed on earth, but you're healed in heaven. That's you're right. not without affliction. That's right. Your soul saved. Mm -hmm. Your soul healed. You're healed one way or the other. Yep. That's right. How, or now, in the real power of Christ was the true issue in the world. Uh, then all so now we uh, we must convey first to the spiritual uh, issues and then the physical issues which we pray for and ask God to do a work uh, in a person to to heal them if that's his will trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and and you shall be saved uh, look with me at Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Yep. Now, a lot of you uh, already uh, know this verse, but it says, For the wages of sin is what? Death. death. The wages of sin is death. Physical and spiritual. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, so are we going to live forever? We are. We're going to live in a glorified body in the presence of God forever. And we will be uh, uh, healed as you said and um, and uh, we'll be awaiting, we're, we're, we're awaiting our new body, our new life in heaven. We're doing what God wants us to do here, but we're awaiting Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I saw a sign in Macon, real quick. Saw a sign in Macon several years ago, a long time ago. And it's they left the word begotten out of Rome, uh, of John 3.16. They just had the word son. Well, I wrote the people that put the that did the sign and I and then I preached a, a message to a to a uh, youth well, a uh, young, well, they were young. <laughs> I don't know how young. They weren't kids, though. And I said, is there anything wrong with taking begotten out of that verse? <clears throat> and he went, no, don't think so. And I said, yeah. How many people do you know that were begotten? That means they were made for this role, given this opportunity to come here and do the work that Christ had to do and would do, and uh, that they were the, uh, the, the son of the living God, begotten by him. And then they got the picture. I said, you know, it's, it's not just his son. I said, uh, <clears throat> what does the word Jesus mean? Or let's say in English, the Spanish word Jesus is what? Jesus. Jesus. Well, if, if that's the case, then anybody named Jesus, without being the begotten son of God, would just be somebody named Jesus. The difference is, is that God's Son is God and He is begotten of Him. And we need to understand the things that God is doing and to keep them in His priority. He 
deals with spiritual issues. He he deals he deals with physical issues and everything in between. But we have to focus first of all. Focus. Sometimes we have to meet a physical need to get a chance to meet a spiritual need. I mean, that's the way it is. But as soon as we can meet the spiritual need, that's how soon we need to meet it. It's got to be first and foremost in our minds. Because that's the way Jesus was and is. That's his plan. Anybody got something you'd like to share? Uh, Maybe a testimony or something that God's done in your life or the life of somebody you knew. Or no. Well, you know, they already had it, you know, hit the nail on the head. You know, the thing of that is his wounds will be healed in this in this in this world. But, you know, our time is limited here. So what we can endure here as opposed to what is coming eternal life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There's a big difference. A big difference. Yeah. Everybody will be healed in heaven. If we're ever suffering we go through, there's a blessing. We've got to look at the blessing and find the blessing and not look at the, the negative. We've got to look at the positive. Because there's always a shot of light somewhere in that negative. Well, it's how we handle things, isn't it? Yeah. Do we do it in God's way or do we do it our way? Sometimes our way is not God's way. But God gives us opportunities, doesn't he? We can be a real witness and a testimony to people. And we can lead people to Jesus when you least think he can do it. Anybody else? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the day and for your goodness to us. Thank you for the word and the truth of it. Help us to understand not that physical life is not important. It is important. But it's not important outside of knowing Jesus Christ. It's not the most important thing. It is the thing we cling to because it's all we know. But we have, if we can just understand, we have a greater life coming. The, our life in the future, in heaven, is everything. So don't let us put our focus and our attention on earthly lives as opposed to everlasting lives. Father, we praise you for what you do. We thank you for this church. We ask you to bless us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Anybody hear anything about Jerry this week? I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Boy, he was in bad shape. Though. Yeah, he was.